Rob Grimes with the IFBTA, and I'm really pleased today to be talking to you from a cargo container box <laughs> at the NCR Global Headquarters. And with me is Jessica Bryant, the Vice President of Marketing and Inside Sales, and Lindsay Petrovic, the Head of Product Management. So welcome to the IFBTA, welcome to being a global industry partner. Thanks, Rob. We're really excited to have you here at our headquarters in Atlanta and talk a little bit about the industry. There's so many different areas that NCR works in. You know, what are the specific things that you would want somebody to know that they don't expect, you know, from NCR, you know, out there that you don't think they know? You know, I think a lot of uh, people look at NCR and think of us as just a point of sale provider. I think it would be fantastic for the industry to understand some of the things that we can do from a services perspective that really unlock clear value, whether you're a small brand or a big brand. Uh, I'll give you one example. Um, one of the largest brands in the world, coffee brands, we work with Starbucks in Europe. They came to us and said, um, hey, we've got 36 different suppliers that we're working with today. Um, they're all technology suppliers. We've got this complex web of systems that we're working with. And we sat down and we built an entire plan for them to figure out how do we become their single point of contact, manage their vendors for them, and then start optimizing driving value out of this. But it could be that they might not even be using an NCR product. That's right. They right? Okay, I'd I mean, be clear on that, right? They weren't using any of our products at that time. And it was just a pure services play to come in and say, let us look at your entire enterprise technology strategy, showcase areas where you can get efficient, where you can optimize, and then let us be the ones that are managing those vendors on your behalf so you can focus on your key growth initiatives. But I would think that that's sort of a, a differentiation point as well, because I think while you're making the point that an area that you want people to know about that they may not know about is the services area, uh, the key points there are that you might be servicing somebody who's not even directly an NCR right. customer in hardware or software. But it's the industry knowledge you're actually bringing forward to yep. be able to do that yep. because there are certainly a lot of service providers out there today, very generic ones, yep. you know, that'll service hardware and software, kitchen equipment and everything. But mm -hmm. if you go take a look at how many really actually understand the industry, yep. you're leading with the understanding of the industry and then applying services yep. to it. We're not just going to be about our, our technology. I would love if every restaurant in the world leveraged a piece of NCR software, but they may not for a variety of reasons, right? But we can add value at any point with any customer, whether or not it's the platform to enable seamless integration of multiple pieces of technology, even if they're not ours, whether or not it's that platform really leveraging our, our services business. Um, I'm happy when we can service a customer in any way. And it's global. And it's global. So, I mean, I'm starting to think of the differentiation points. We have global, mm -hmm. we have independent, uh, independent SMB enterprise, large-scale mm -hmm. enterprise, right? We have services across the board, NCR mm -hmm. products or not. Mm -hmm. um, we have thought leadership in here. We have uh, innovation because you've actually also mentioned the idea of consulting for a client right, yeah. on how to develop what they're doing. So I, uh, that's actually mm -hmm. a different thing yep. too. So if you start taking those things independently, there are players in each independent thing. But when you put them together, it's really placing NCR as almost unique, you know, and being in a space. And then I would add one more thing. You know, we were talking before, I came from a, a convenience store mm -hmm. conference mm -hmm. last week, and uh, there's NCR, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you that a lot of the other food service providers, you point of sale or otherwise, you know, are there. Um, but you're playing across multiple industries, and we're starting to see those industries converge. Yep. Yes. And so you also have the collective uh, knowledge of retail, C-store, banking and payments, mm -hmm. you know, to bring them all together. Now how do you bring them all together? Because one of the biggest problems that people have is you have these silos, right? Yep. So you have all this collective knowledge. I'll guess it's in this building somewhere, right? Yep. But how do you actually bring that knowledge to bear so somebody in the restaurant business is getting that knowledge and somebody in the C-store business who wants to do restaurants yep. is getting that knowledge? Yep. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's a challenge that we continually face. I think um, one of the announcements we made this year was a split and a separation of NCR into two companies. Um, the retail, the hospitality folks are, are joining one company, and I think that will help us get even closer together and start blurring some of those lines. The other piece is the platform that Lindsay's been talking mm -hmm. about is actually a common platform across retail, So everything's built, built upon, that platform, upon that platform. Exactly. And then you can bring in your custom pieces or you can bring the That's NCR right, yeah. pieces in, and they're all going to sort of work together there. That's, That's right. exactly okay. right. And that is happening so much. We have so many customers on the retail and restaurant side that are starting to blend. 
restaurants offering a retail store, uh, grocery stores having a restaurant attached, you know, the gas station. Well, yeah, partnerships going together in them, right? Huge partnerships. Um, and the platform is really what enables us to be able to connect multiple points of sale if that's needed, different back office capabilities, kitchen, and where the application can be used across both. The platform is how we integrate. There Do you no ever difference. bring your... Um, customers from the different areas together to have sort of a uh, brainstorming session? We have. We actually used mm -hmm. to hold a pretty big customer event blended across restaurant and retail pre-COVID. We haven't had that event since before COVID, but uh, knock on wood, we'll hopefully bring that back next year. Yeah, I mean, there are an awful lot of partnerships mm -hmm. that are going on, and yes. it really takes that collective. Well, nothing's invented in one industry or no. another, no. So, yep. but they all seem to have common problems, data security mm -hmm. problems. Yep. They've got common problems on the platform, the integration mm -hmm. of other you know types of systems, services, mm -hmm. which... Yep somehow seems to be an afterthought sometimes, but so maybe people should lead with that, yep. mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then globalization, you know, so uh, you're also in a unique situation to be able yep. to, you know, yep. bring all that to bear as well. I would say that's one of the other strengths that we have is scalability. Uh, a lot of the brands that are in your top, you know, 100 brands started with us at store number one, store number yep. two. And so our ability yeah, if they're 134 only, years old, yeah. they could have started with you. <laughs> yeah. right? so, so the ability not only able to grow brands um, nationally here within the U.S., but also help them grow outside of the U.S. We've got several brands that we're helping get into new markets as well. So you both see a lot of different things out there because you, you do both have global titles. You talk to a lot of uh, global customers in multiple industries, and your leadership also comes from other places. So what are the, the trends that you're seeing uh, in the industry today um, they may be observations on trends that most people aren't thinking about, but you're starting to see them because you get all those different data points. Yeah, so I think the biggest one that we're seeing across the board in every single type of technology is around automation. You know, when you look at the industry as a whole. Thank God you didn't just say AI. I, okay, we're good. That's a automation. buzzword that's overused. Automation. Um, but automation is really, it gets at the customer pain point. There's so much low value work happening or manual tests across different types of technology in the industry and different processes in a restaurant there. So whether or not it's, you know, the videos you see of robots in a kitchen, um, certainly that's an area that we're seeing customers get more interested in. Whether or not it's the back office capabilities that I referenced earlier, why should, you know, someone make a schedule hand in hand if they can just have uh, an automated schedule right. created for them. Um, so that is something given the labor shortage challenges, the margin pressure that our customers are facing um, that we really see uh, as a huge trend in the industry, which of course we're, we're helping uh, drive solutions for. Um, and then I think, not a new trend, but an ongoing focus point is what is the customer experience that our restaurants want to drive um, with technology and others, uh, uh, other so ways. So what is the customer experience? You know, what are the customers yeah. driving restaurant tours and food service operators and retailers mm -hmm. to have to get into? Not the COVID customers yeah. who drove them to all go do the online ordering, but what are the customer trends that are pushing the industry today. Yeah, so I think personalization is a huge one. When you think about restaurants, um, they're just now latching on to broad digital channels. COVID helped accelerate that. The beauty of digital interactions is they can all be personalized using data, right? We are just scratching the surface and our customers are just scratching the surface on the power of that. What does that mean? Um, so I think there'll be a lot more to come uh, on personalization in the future and how that can be leveraged. Um, but customers, you know, uh, the consumers of our restaurants uh, have so many choices now. So there's lots of conversations about loyalty, about marketing. How do I ensure that every touch point that uh, a That's restaurant That's because there's has, a lot more data out there now yes, accessible to right. restaurants that they didn't have before. That's right. That's which you right. would know from your credit card background. Yes, that is exactly right. <laughs> so there's lots of lots of interesting things happening with data powering marketing, data powering loyalty uh, for our customers to really drive that you know share of stomach as we like to call it. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jessica and Lindsay for joining us today. I certainly want to thank uh, NCR for being a global industry partner, and mm. it's a long uh, it's a long overdue welcome, but you're you're already there. But uh, <laughs> thank you for joining me today, and also for hosting us in this great global facility. So Absolutely. thank you. Thank, thank you. you.